Thank you so much for being with me here today. Thanks for accepting my invitation. Thank you. I'm really honored to have you. Um, so today I have the honor of hosting a very special guest. Lino Khermesh is the manager and producer of Vocal Odyssey, voice therapy workshops and retreats, along with his wife, the amazing singer, Nessie Gomez. And he's also the brother of Omer Khermesh, which was murdered on October 7th in the village of Kfar Aza, where the rest of his family miraculously survived. And I approached you, uh, Lino, because you speak truth to power, because your voice is unapologetic, your words are fierce, are painful, yet so awakening and so needed. And I'm honored to give you a stage to voice yours and Omel's views today. Hmm. Thank you. So thank you for joining me. And I'd, I'd love to start with, you know, if you want to say a few words about yourself uh, or about Omer, or if you want to dive straight into the eulogy that you wrote for Omer's uh, 30th um, It was a, a very moving ceremony. I may yeah. even, yeah, I will put a link to the video uh, of, of the actual ceremony. Um, but I've, I'd, I'd be happy to hear you read the eulogy again because it was very strong and very moving. Okay, I'm just, I'm looking down because I'm going to read it from my phone. Um, And it was originally in Hebrew, so it's the first time I read the English translation. So some words I might gonna <laughs> gonna ask you like, what does that word mean? And it's, no a word, it's a word that I wrote, but I wrote it in Hebrew, and sometimes the translation is a is a word in English I never used. So let's see how it goes. Yeah. Hamas suffered a heavy blow. This was one of Omer's favorite cliches. If it was up to me or him, that was the sentence we would have engraved on his tombstone. I have no doubt that he would, that would have pleased him. There is a situation, and even a reasonable situation, that Omer would even, Omer, my brother, would even take, it, take this concept one step further, more in the direction of Omer Khermesh, that was his full name, murdered by the Hamas in cooperation with the, Israeli, with the Israel Corporation. After all, this was almost his last message that he wrote before he got killed. A prophet he was, a grotesque soul full of grace and tor tormented at times, moving on the same line between the comic and the tragic. It was easy to paint him as an eccentric, extreme, obsessive. All this is true, but there was always a stubborn seed of truth there, of sharp and multidimensional observation, of sensitivity and the rare ability to feel the final layers of reality, of intuition and original thinking, of painful honesty, painful honesty, to hide or be ashamed of. His directness was at times disturbing and at the same time arousing, arousing astonishment and admiration for many. Sad clown, joker, preacher at the gate, the boy pointing at the naked king, the one that will never grow up, the one that dogs and children an innocent as him, touched his heart, and he touched theirs. The one who always sympathized with the weak, the one who was busy day and night with real and imaginary wars, strikes without a malicious intent and at others, and especially at himself, breaks records of cynicism, bitterness, honesty, and humor, lives on a borrowed time, indifferent to his fate, feeds on chaos, self-righteousness, and the love of his friends and family. 
His heart was pure and honest, then gentle and vulnerable. His heart could barely stand the last three years. He's increasing, he was increasingly shut himself between four walls in his own company with the records and the weed he loves to smoke. The world is gradually becoming less nice for the sensitive, for the individual souls. Walking in the allowed paths and complying to authority became the oral Torah, the new normal. And Omer turned his back to all of it. He didn't wear a mask just because sneeze is the new nuclear bomb. He didn't give a shoulder just because Simon says so or because you get a pizza for free. He did not dress up as a slave. He did not block the Ayalon Highway in Israel in a demonstration screaming democracy or shame. It all felt like a nonsense for him. A charade, charade, an empty lie, empty lie, brainwashing, diversion, uh, divide and rule. And he didn't bother to hide his feelings from the public. For him, it was all a crusade. He ab abhorred, I hope I say it correctly, mm -hmm. abhorred, abhorred yeah. anything that did not align with his quiet inner voice. He listened, he listened to his gut and almost extinct art nowadays. He mm -hmm. knew the revolution won't be televised. And to him, while the crowd is barking up on the wrong tree, his country, which is no longer his, will sell him and everyone else out. It's only a matter of time, he used to say, until they, they spared out blood, enslave us, until everything is taken away from us. Unfortunately, he was not really wrong. His and our, and our blood were allowed. They betrayed us. They betrayed my dear father and mother. They betrayed Omer, who did not even bother to enter to the safe room when the sirens went off. He preferred wearing a headband and play Machina rock band at a full volume every time that the missiles were aimed at the kibbutz. Omer was killed, but you can be sure for one thing, he did not beg for his life. He provoked and chose to defy his murders even in his last moments. He never counted on living until 120 years. He was always amongst us as if a moment, as if in a moment he would no longer be with us. If you're going through hell, keep going. This sentence appears repeatedly uh, this month for me. So we are all somehow together here going through hell. At least we can all agree on that. We are barely walking, tumbling through this valley of shadow and death. We are all here. Our descended loves, loved, loved ones who are deceased. with us. Our deceased. Deceased, sorry. Deceased yeah. loved ones are with us, hovering above, not in a hurry to say goodbye. As well as our kidnapped loved ones, as well as our physically injured friends, as well as all of us, each one of us, the living dead, walking stricken. Mm -hmm. Yes, stricken. With a scared soul, can't comprehend. Our body is heavy, layers of ice around our broken heart, ranging from despair to pain to rage to indifference again and again, on the edge homeless, displaced people. Every day feels like a year. We hang on the rare, on, on rare, onto rare glimpse of grace, on a child's smiles, the help of a friend, the presence of those who survived the massacre. We, can, we hang on to small moments of dark humor in a glass a quarter full. Millions of humans being sleepwalking, struck on a shock, here in Gaza, here and in Gaza, 
forced to take part in a terrible blood game of the dark forces and nightmare, led like sheep to the slaughter by despisable, despicable, despicable rulers guided by the devil, can't digest what will become of life and how to move on from here. In addition, humanity in, at its peak, the rest, the rest of the world around us choose a side, cheering, cursing, demonstrating, making for and against arguments, stroking, stoking, the, stoking the fire, the hatred, the vision and revenge. Distracted, distracted. By, distracted by the state media, like mm. they're watching some twisted football game. And now, who would, who would have believed? We also have our own holocaust. Holocaust in color, holocaust in Go, with GoPro cameras, live holocaust, a holocaust of WhatsApp group desperate for help and a raging social media with myth and bravery and where was God and fire brothers, fire and ashes and dust. And soon enough, we'll have our Mordechai and Ilevich, like the heroes of the previous Holocaust, and our Hannah Senesh and Anna Frank, and the music, and the songs, and the ceremonies, and the monuments, and the never again. History repeat itself, more cruel and cynical than ever. History cooks us a Holocaust with a taste of the past, but with a modern twist. Holocaust 2.0, if you will. Holocaust on our behalf a homemade holocaust, the holocaust of a full cooperation between the dark forces outside and the forces of evil within. Our sons and daughters were slaughtered with a cruelty that the heart could not bear, could never bear. In a moment, the, in, in a moment, the initial shock and grief will pass. Then the deep sadness will take root. Emptiness will enter through the front door followed by rage, the rage of a mother who lost her children, the rage of orphans, rage that this country may not have seen before. A new generation will arise. Their voices are already heard, steady and determined voices, voices that will cry out for the blood of our brothers and sisters until the earth trembles and turn its face until every ruler and position holder who betrayed our people pays the price, until we push them out from within us. We will investigate them one by one and not let go. Where were you for eight hours? Some people say 18 or 20 or whatever. Who committed treason? Who sold our people and our families? Who forsaken their blood? Who allowed the Gaza envelop Holocaust? Who cleared the way for the Hamas monsters? We will ask all security establishment leaders, the chief of staff, the head of the Shin Bet, the head of the intelligent forces, the Mossad, the Air Force, Southern commands, Gaza command, division commanders, senior commanders, whoever was sitting in the headquarters, where were you? Up until two years ago, every one of them knew how to locate, trace, and quarantine any innocent asymptomatic COVID carrier. A month ago, thousands, dozens of Toyotas and tractors disappeared from their radars despite months of warnings. We will ask the establishment mainstream media channels, the government media messengers, who silenced you, who talked to you, who could you have, what could you have done that you didn't? Any victory photos you give us on the behalf of the IDF spokesman and your other sponsors will not help. We have already lost the most valuable of all. All the ministers, the members of the parliament who gained political capital from these events, those not asking the truly important questions, 
trying how to collect votes under the asp spices, auspicious, how you say it? <laughs> um, auspices. Auspices of mourning. We will hold you to account. We will ask all of you here and now, what do you think about, what do you think about every night when you're going to sleep? About the disaster that happened on your watch? about those who, be, who betrayed, about who could sell our people and our families, about those who shed their blood. You must have some idea who allowed the Gaza and Bella Holocaust. And lastly, the mega rogue you? Rogue. 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 Yeah, rogue. About this word. The mega rogue. <laughs> Bibi. The evil, the evil, evil Haman? A Haman. Haman. Yeah. You Haman. said so, Haman. Yeah. Haman. Like, like <laughs> in the Purim. Uh... Evil Haman, but our, our own, blue and white, the grief architect, the ex... Uh, executioner. Executioner. The divisive. The furniture dealer who long ago sold his soul and heart to the devil, to the devil. He received the task to finish off this country and to his credit, he stuck to the mission. We will not forget nor forgive. We'll persecute justice. We will hunt you until your last day, which will be a very happy day. When I started writing this ob obituary, How you say for Omer? Obituary for Omer. Obituary. Such a weird word. <laughs> First time. I'm, 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 while I'm reading this, I'm also learning the language called English. So it's a, it's a great process. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Thank you. I was looking for comfort. I was looking for a light at the end of the tunnel. I was looking for something along the lines of in their death, they commanded us to leave. Unfortunately, I'm not there yet. I have a hard time finding comfort, hard time to understand. One day, this too shall, shall come. The understanding, the gratitude, maybe even some kind of forgiveness. But until then, we'll persuade, pursue or persuade? Per pursue. Pursue justice. Together, we will defeat the enemy outside and no less the enemy within. At least we will ease Omer and the other angels' heart. Their death was also the death of the great darkness and the beginning of the human dawn that is beyond our knowingness. Big, big, big amen mm. to that. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Uh, first of all, Your words are chilling and amazing, and uh, I identify so much mm. with Omer's um, viewpoint mm. and with your descriptions of um, what has happened to us. I know we have more question marks than answers. We hold a lot of question marks, and we have our speculations on things, but in reality, we really don't know everything, and we yeah. may even never know everything. Yeah. We may even never get the answers that we want to get, but I mm. think that at this point, at least for me, I want to hear how it is for you. It doesn't matter. I mean, I, I don't need to know everything, every detail. I know enough to know that the evil is ruling, that evil has led us to where we are today, and that we have to speak out in order to show its face and learn from it. Mm. What's your take on this? I, for me, the not knowing is a is a wonderful statement. I love it because uh, um, everybody are kind of like it's a, maybe it's a natural instinct, a human instinct to kind of 
get a grip on reality, you know, and kind of like come with some bold statement, you know, so so because uh, personally maybe the way we perceive ourselves or the way we want to be perceived by others is like that we are we are like a great human beings and we really care about the world which is at the essence of it at the at the at the essence of it is true but it's also like you said a reality here is very complicated like and even even us being here even me being in israel i cannot speak with exclamation marks and I cannot say, hey, if you disagree with me, then fuck you, you know, because I, I re- I'm almost welcome with my words all the time. Respectfully, people that will tell me, you know, um, I disagree with you and it's fine. It's also OK, you know, because we all somehow trying to navigate our best. And it's such an emotional and explosive, you know, subject, you know, like. I don't know why, since the beginning of times, like people just get so excited when, when it comes to Israel and the whole thing around and with their excitement and their kind of like a, um, instinct or, or longing to find, find meaning or reason or purpose or an understanding. Many times I believe that as humanity, we just forget that at the end of the day, what we the only thing that we, maybe we can agree on and that, that there's a lot of innocent people suffering everywhere and it's not people who signed for it they are not the uh, soldiers who knows that uh, you know they can die it's part of their uh, kind of a yeah like a job description but people for example the community or the kibbutz where i come from or the same breath I said, you know, innocent people in Gaza, they, if you, if you go now and you, I'm going to question all the people, all these uh, civilians or innocent people involved in this, you're probably going to get around 100% of um, answers that they will say, I don't want this. I'm not, I'm, I'm not enjoying it, you know, I'm not having fun you know, running with my children's dead body. This is not something that I would welcome to my life, you know? And if when people will understand that, they will turn to be a, a little bit more um, sensitive with, with the subject and less political, you know? Because the same, the same uh, political views that people share uh, instantly after you know reading a a little piece in the guardian or 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 watching something in the bbc or the cnn you know it it doesn't help it doesn't help in any way you know when people scream even that when people scream the most kind of obvious thing free gaza you know of course i'm an israeli i have an israeli passport and i would love to see gaza free i actually saw gaza free you know when i was there in the 80s and everything it was they were like our brothers honestly you know when when i had to fix my my bike as a child i went to gaza really really yeah things were things were fine things were cool and and there was abundance you know they used to work in our kibbutz they were our friends of course it wasn't perfect or anything you know but it wasn't like today and um, and me that i've seen better days Again, it's better days. It's not perfect days, because you know, like it's, it's just it's just becoming. And maybe the reason that we are speaking English, which I kind of stopped because I kind of lost hope a little bit on on interfering the the train of thoughts of people, you know, because it's so it's so intense and it's so um, fired up, you know. But you know, it's like. We are, we are in it together, all the innocent people. We are in it together, the suffering. You know, like people come with maps and they come with the, yeah, but, you know, we suffer more, you know, so your suffering is not valid. Or, yeah, but in 47, yeah, no, 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 you don't understand. 
but in 36, oh, you're talking about 36, let me talk about 28, uh, 28. Do you know what happened in 1912 here? And, and it's never ending, this kind of like a, 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 a victim trip competition. Yes. You know, between yeah, people. Who's, who's the biggest victim? Who, yeah, who, like was, who was not tortured more, ups. kicked out more? Yeah, everybody but we have the ups. Holocaust, but we have Nakba, but we have, yeah. you know. And it's like, who's going to stop first and say, hey, 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 this is a little bit kind of a, um, you know, this it doesn't help. Yes, you suffered. You know, my mother, I tell her now, she was born in a refugee camp. And now she's 75 after four years of battling cancer. And she's again in a refugee camp. You know, wow. <laughs> it's like, and it's like, what I want to say, and again, it's not to undermine the suffering of people in Gaza or everywhere, but just to say, when my mother arrived here as a baby, you know, from, from the Holocaust, after all her family died there, massacred, blah, 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 history repeat itself, you know, she didn't choose to come here and to kill the Palestinians. She was just a baby, you know, so we are all in it together like i i have deep sympathy for the pain everywhere because I, I i i don't want to let these events that where my brother killed and all my community got massacred basically and they are now in living hell because now is the living hell yes you know? now slowly like you're just in this void in this empty space of of you lost all your dear ones or many of them and, and you, you know, you, it's just shock, you know, and, uh, and, and then to say also like, you know, equally the hell is on the other side. I, I cannot go there. I'm not allowed to go there. I cannot go there with my passport. So I can only feel to it or imagine or hear stories, preferably not on mainstream media. Yeah. You know? And and really re relate also to that, but from there comes this uh, compassion, compassion for everybody, rather than than point someone is bad or good. You know, we if you ask most most people in Israel right now, they hate their rulers. They're so fucking angry. You know, they're so heartbroken for everything that happened. You know. Nobody, we are all victims of our governments in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> yes, I know, I know. And you you touched on um, good and evil, bad and good, you said. And I want to I pause you on that for a second. And I'm going to read out an excerpt from your writing three weeks after October 7th. It was a Facebook yeah. post, and I will put the link to the full post um, in the episode notes. So you start with the with a quote from the Joker from Batman saying, so as you know, madness is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. And then you wrote, earlier in September, I spent some weeks diving into the stories of Batman and the Joker. I got a bit obsessed with this mythology that asks questions of real values, chaos, madness, good and evil. I felt the waves of insanity all through 2023. Inwardly, maybe, the hardest year I ever had. Mysteriously, I started grieving my brother already nine months ago. All year, I felt his pain. I became his pain. His pain was mine. Four months ago, I felt an urge and took him for a one-week vacation in Amsterdam, which was a goodbye party. Witnessing him being killed in such a brutal and cold way raised tough moral questions within me. I was wondering if this was the little push I needed that would unleash the mad one in me, the killer the one seeking revenge. It is a very confusing place to be. Wow. How do you handle this dark side when you experience what you've experienced? 
Um, it's a good question, you know, because to lose a brother is a huge one, you know. But I meet many people now that lost their children. <sighs> I I meet them daily, you know, everywhere. And, um, you know, like, I, I cannot, This we're coming back again to the kind of having your heart open for these people because it's very hard for people to 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 imagine this or even to imagine how they will respond to that you know we know like you know if like if i come back if i take my girl from school and she tells me this this boy this boy kicked me in you know whatever just a minor kind of children thing i mean immediately like where where is he i'm going to fucking kill him you know like something small like that you know and um so imagine if something like this happened, if someone, you know, kill your child or, you know, if you need to bear witness, the, the most horrible thing you can imagine, you know, like someone, you know, rape your daughter and kill her. These things happen, you know. People had to go through that. How, who are you after this event? You know, I, I don't know. I might, I might going to fucking lose it, you know, and I'm going to kind of like go on a whole crusade of revenge. And I won't, I won't relax until I will, I will kill double or triple or hundreds more. And this is what many people feel now, you know, because Israel is a small place. Get a lot of attention, a lot of press, <laughs> but it's a small place, you know. It's very small because so everyone knows someone, you know. Everyone has a relative or a, or a close friend or someone who who was deeply affected by the, these events, you know? So I'm, 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 in, I'm in a lucky position in a way that I lost my brother, but all my family was very close to die. All my brothers and my sister and my, my parents, they were all there for 21 hours or something, you know, fighting for their life, praying for God because nobody came, you know? You know, they thought maybe God will come, you know? <laughs> Just like, you know, they kind of... Uh, you know, they lost hope on the physical uh, support. So, so it's like, it's like, I don't know, you know, I, I, I ha that's why I have also respect for people who are responding differently from me. I can understand people now that want revenge. It's almost like a natural instinct, you know? So I hear, I hear people who were very peaceful before and now they want to see, you know, they want Gaza to be like a, parking lot and i cannot tell them you're bad you're horrible you're doing what the nazis did and because you see it's so easy to hurt people and to shock them you know we we like to speak a lot about the you know the shock doctrine and you yes. go you go along um, among the people now in the communities here in israel that got affected and for sure in gaza and you see you see how easy it is to shock people to take take their power from them, to make them feel so weak and helpless. Yeah. And this is the reason why I'm here now, you know? I'm like, I'm, my life is in, it's not here. My life is in England and everything, near England, in Channel Islands, you know? But but I'm, I'm here now, first and foremost, for my family, of course, but also the others. And, and people are, are really, really struggling. It's yeah. everything, they, they've been multi-dimensionally been punched yeah you know, first they lost their dear ones you know they lost family member members then some of them are injured yeah then th those who are not injured are spiritually and mentally injured you know they're heavily traumatized from this and then they were they've been also uprooted from their houses they lost their homes you know they lost their uh, they lost their uh, belongings so they are just in a state of like, you know, they are paralyzed. You know, many of them can't even feel. Hmm. You know, they are just like a deer in the headlight. And and again, not to undermine everything that's going on in Gaza, I know, but we we are in it together in that which you can call the, you know, the boat of human suffering. A hundred percent. Mm-hmm. A hundred percent. And, and that boat of human suffering, I, you know, it just doesn't leave me the thought that someone up there is actually 
allowing all this suffering to happen, if not planning and strategizing the next suffering event that will happen somewhere around the world. You know, the, and, and it just kills me. You know, you, you wrote that Omer was screaming for years that the country of Israel was sold long ago to dark forces that won't protect their own citizens. Yeah. And and people say that he was an extremist, that he was a fool, that he lost his mind long time ago. I say some of these things too sometimes. And some of my really brilliant, intelligent, educated friends say the same thing. Mm -hmm. And obviously we are being vilified and ridiculed. Yeah. But I don't care about that. I care about human lives. I care about people actually understanding that maybe, maybe there are some people out there, up there, that don't have our best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. That maybe some of that boat of suffering that we're experiencing is actually designed that way so that someone can gain something out of it. Yeah. There are some motives for it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to turn you on. I know it's, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, you know, I'm hurting with you and, and yeah. with all of us that we have to go through this nightmare again, just like my grandparents went through from yeah. all sides, Holocaust yeah. or, you know, in Israel when they came yeah. here in the forties and your mother and your family and the horrific things that people had to go through on October 7th and many, many times before in Israel, you know, whether it's terrorist attacks or pandemics, whether they're real or not. And, and all this crap that is being pushed onto us from every direction. And we stand there very helpless, like wh where's the next thing going to come from and how do I prepare for it? How do I protect myself and what do I do? Yeah, I mean, it, it, if I, sometimes I see how how people respond to that, and I, I just wish to tell them, like, if only you would know that these are, you know, those enemies. At least, at least sometimes in the river, in the level of rulers, are they 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 can equally be best buddies, you know? They're just kind of uh, doing stuff together, like. We everybody knows that the, for example, the the Hamas was a, a creation of of Israel and the U.S. This is not even a secret. This is not even a conspiracy. This you can, you know, you you just need to Google it. But they they created this entity, and in in a very similar way, I guess that they are creating, you know, kind of, you know, madness or or just unrest everywhere. It's it's not different from a system that they used in Central South America, you know, in, in countries there, or the whole post September 11 invasions, destructions of countries who actually had pretty good time, you know, until the war on terror, you mm -hmm. know. It's just, so they they created a mega event here. God knows for what, you know. Now now they. Now the problem was created, so we're just left with the reaction and the solution. You know, and the, personally for me, at one point during the COVID time, I couldn't, I couldn't even go there anymore. And I realized... Where? To, to this place of like, uh, you know, the, the forces of darkness. I, I, I started to focus my, at least my efforts, yeah. first and foremost on my own salvation. <laughs> You know, but I, I realize that we, we it's very difficult. It will be difficult for us to fix the problem from the place that was created, you know. So unlike my dead brother, who was, a, you know, he was like a real, uh, I don't know, nihilist or just kind of like, you know, he couldn't shut his mouth. I was kind of like, I can't be bothered anymore, you know, with like telling people you're wrong and this and that. And, and. You know, slowly, slowly in our small communities, in our families, wherever we are, just to bring the goodness, you know, that's all we can do. Like, 
You know, the whole Torah at the end of the day is love one another. Yeah. You know, and if we could focus on that right now and understand that this is a humanitarian situation, this is not yeah. only a political situation, you know, like it, it is political on some level, but, you know, be careful before you judge, be careful from your judgments because, you know, human suffering and human horror knows no borders and no, knows no, you know, kind of like, Stay there if you can. Talk to people in Israel. Talk to people in Gaza. See how they feel. Pray for them. Yeah. And know that it's, it ain't fun. Wherever you are, it is a very, very extreme reality. It's nothing like you can think of when you wake up in the morning and, you know, your, what, what is ahead of you is, is, is your, you know, making yourself a cappuccino or, or I don't know, like, whatever, where are we going to have dinner today? You know? Yeah, you're, you're 100% right. I wanted okay. to ask you about your, how, how do you recommend handling the media these days, the role of the media? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I personally, I don't, I don't consume, I barely consume any mainstream media, you know? It's just like, I, I, was, I was sitting yesterday with a, good friend of mine a mother lost her, her first son in the in saturday then and and lost another three or four family members and um and she told me and she was like you know i was always like da, da, da. you know she was a good, good a good citizen let's say and now she's like it's like as if i'm watching truman show you know so it, it it's happening to a lot of people now that they, they are disconnecting. Like my father, my father was a politician and he was the mayor of, of the whole area. He was like, really? this area of, around Gaza was the project of his life. And he himself, like, he, I don't think he watched, he watched TV since. He lost hope. He's so betrayed. He's so angry. He's so hurt, wow. you know? So this is something that happened to many people now. They are they don't believe the narrative anymore. They they feel so betrayed by their by their country and their and their like institutes and politicians and everything. So you just you know find your way to to approach whatever is happening here with a, with an open heart, as if it's it's your own family, as if, as if it's your own country, as if it's your own. You know, you can imagine as much, you, you cannot go all the way with your imagination. There is no way. You don't know what it means. Not mean to kind of disregard the feelings of everyone outside of this area, but really, really like to, to, to face such horror is a different state of consciousness. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't know. I can tell you a lot about it, but you don't know what it means, you know, to, to be in that space of horror. But you can imagine, you know, and you can imagine how, how is it to be a refugee? How is it to lose the, 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 the dearest of all to you, you know? And then, and, then, and then from that place to have more of a mercy and more of a, of a, of a, of a, of a mutual prayer toward that rather than, you know, like, this is good, this is bad, this is evil, this is a... You know, also to the other side, people who are standing from Israel, for Israel, people are, have the tendency immediately to raise flags and to yeah. do a nice Facebook cover page, a, a cover photo, or to, to uh, they see something online, they see something on, on, on some usually mainstream media and they run to their Instagram account and they put this, you know, they put this uh, story and they feel so good about themselves. You know, oh, I'm such a moral person and this, but actually... You don't know what the fuck is going on here. This is like, this shit is real. This is not like for us here, whether you are in Israel or whether you're in Gaza, this is like, this is proper hell that we are experiencing and people are barely, barely crossing this valley of death. You know? For us, this is not a social media game. Yeah. So don't fuck with us and don't fuck with the people from Gaza. Until you have a, a, a good glass yourself of this medicine, this bitter medicine. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for using a language that is a... No, that's fine. No censorship <laughs> on my channel, you know. You know? Um, 
Yeah, I know what you mean. And I, I feel the ease in which people, without being aware, I think, of what they're doing, are, again, being manipulated and dragged into this game. It became like a hobby to choose a side and then go all in on that side. And I'm not saying that, you know, they're looking to be extreme, but they are being pulled into an extreme. Some extre Someone's pulling them into an extreme. They, they feel that they're right in the center of what they believe and what they feel, but they don't realize that they have actually picked a side and now they're playing some game of sides. It's this against that. Yeah, the, this is what mainstream media does. It's just divide you and manipulate your emotions. And uh, it's not that really bad stuff is not happening. It is happening. It is but happening. There are so many, so many layers for this reality. And there's exactly. so many kind of like, uh, you know, I, like I said, we all want to have Gaza free, but free from what? Free from who? You know, really ask this question and understand that if you would secretly interviewing the innocent people of Gaza, they would probably tell you the same thing. Like, we are, we are just suffering from those who rules us. I can say it more here because probably, you know, now, especially when I lost my brother, I can say everything, you know. <laughs> you know, like people tell me it's okay. You know, they probably they will not investigate me for calling to, to do some really a kind of revolutionary stuff here, you know which I'm actually calling to do, you know, I'm not calling for violence. I'm not calling to kill anyone, you know, but I do think that, uh, you know, the, the people who are running this shit show here in Israel, you know, they better go soon before some people will go after them. You know, you know, it would, it wouldn't be nice. You know, you can, you can ask uh, Ceausescu in Romania and this, when, when the people get really, really fed up, you know, when I spoke now in the in the ceremony for my brother and I was like, shit, you know, there was a lot of like kind of like politicians around, friends of my father and people that serves in the army for long. And, you know, I was kind of concerned, you know, because I kind of pushed it with my text. Yeah. And they came to me at the end and they were like, hell yeah. <laughs> wow. You know? Count me in, you know. <laughs> people think, are, yeah. People even are, the, even they <laughs> get that that it, everything is so rotten. They get it. Yeah. And I don't, I don't understand how they don't put their keys and go home already. I don't get it. But they have the audacity of staying there and continue to talk bullshit on mainstream media to us. We don't yeah. give a f about what they think, and and they're doing such horrible things. They're not helping anyone. Yeah, I know. They're poorly running the show. They yeah. have been poorly running the show for a long, long time, and now they continue to run it very poorly. Yeah. It's just really strange that these people are still in position after everything. But um, again, I, I almost also, I don't have much capacity now to really kind of, you know, I'm just, I'm just busy with the... With the of course. No, and I'm, I just want to say that people like you and the families and the people who are the layers of people who are supporting you and supporting the country is what is holding this country together right now. I see that, you know, people have in a way understood, even if, yeah. again, they're not fully aware of it, they have understood, they rose up, they understood their role right now yeah. in holding things together. The government is not functioning. The I don't know what they're doing. The the members of parliament are useless. I don't know what they're doing. But people are actually running the show. They go out every day out of their houses and they help whoever needs help and they make things somehow operate, function, move yeah. along, you know, support yeah. whoever needs support, whether it's with food or, you know, whatever, hug whatever supplies are needed, whatever services are needed. And, and that's that at least we have that. Yeah. It's a good time to be a nice human being. No doubt. Wherever you are, you know, not only here, but in general, just to, to act in a kind way. Yeah. Because uh, 
the level of horror and suffering and pain is really this is something that I haven't even seen before in my life a percent of that you know yeah, so it's 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 a good it's a good time to be kind you know to do the we cannot fix everything and we cannot you know we cannot really figure out and understand all these forces of darkness or even what it means maybe there's some incredible you know rising up and and expanding and 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 transformation of humanity as a result of this hell maybe you know that's why that's why it's better not to judge it but rather just hold hands strong with who you can and and have compassion yeah have an open heart yeah just like you said yeah. okay so you know i'm gonna read a last excerpt from your writing perfect and then have a hopeful end <laughs> okay so it's a, it's the it's the drawing hope part your silver your silver lining mm-hmm. um you said i am lucky enough to find loads of silver linings in my situation yes my brother got killed yes my family got wounded mentally and spiritually lost their homes and they need to start life from zero yet So many of them were saved by no less than a miracle. Many times during those horrific 20 hours of satanic massacre, I said goodbye to them. So I am almost in a privileged position to stay in the light, to refuse the impulse of revenge in this ongoing organized blood game. Yet, I can't judge none of those involved. Jews, Arabs, etc, who feel differently. How would I feel if God forbid my own daughter would be murdered in front of my eyes? And from this not knowing comes compassion. And from this not knowing comes a deep sense of sorry for all the innocents. And from this place of utter sorrow for all beings, I refuse to raise a flag. I refuse to turn my grief into propaganda. I refuse to be divided and ruled. I refuse to lose my humanity and deny the prayer in me. I give my middle finger to evil itself and its agents, heartless politicians, weapon mega dealers, and mainstream media. And I jump to your hopeful end. May all violence end now. May all hostages, kids and women, be back home. May humanity rise up. Yeah, so why not? <laughs> why not, huh? Bring it on, man. Yeah. So yeah. in the memory of uh, your beloved brother. your special, very special soul, beloved brother, Omer Khermesh, I send you a huge thank you and a hug. And when I see you physically very soon, I'll give you a real hug. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Frat. Thank you for everything you do. And thank you for your, yeah, your, your stamina in these uh, rough times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we got to hold it together. Yeah. We will get through this, dude. We will. Yeah. Of course it, we will. It's, it's a big shit show, but we're strong. Yeah, yeah. Slowly, slowly. So I'm going to end this episode with a song from your beautiful wife. She has uh, the voice of an angel, I think. Oh. Uh, I mean, not, at least when now. I hear her voice, I get the chills. She's uh, amazing. She's now with our daughter while I'm uh, here in Israel. Well, yes. Are they not in Israel? No, no, I, 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 I thought to save them from this. <laughs> Good. You know? Yes. You know, they, are, they, you know, they, they weren't born into this reality, so I don't, I don't think, I don't see a reason to integrate them. <laughs> yeah, you want to spare them. And I yeah, get they're, that. They're back in our, in our home, which is in the Channel Islands, between England and France. Amazing. Yeah. So I send them love and protection. Yeah. And we're going to end with a song from Nessie. All right. 
Thank you, Fat. Thank you so much. Uh, bye bye. Bye, dear. Thank you, Dan. <laughs>